Hello and welcome to Undead Gaming News, your one-stop shop for all things gaming. I'm your host Zombie and first up this week, Epic Games have officially begun their new Epic First Run scheme, described as an opt-in exclusivity program for third-party developers and publishers, that promises to boost Epic's usual 88% revenue cut for developers all the way up to 100% if they agree to keep their new game exclusive to the Epic Games Store for the first six months of release. And the company is now complementing that offer by pledging to give developers in a scheme it's calling Now on Epic, a six-month 100% revenue cut for bringing over games that are currently live on another third-party PC store or included in a third-party subscription service available on another third-party PC store. Games must have been released on other storefronts before the 31st of October this year, and after six months of being on the Epic Game Store, revenue will revert to Epic's standard 88% to 12% split. The catch, though, is that games must be transferred in bulk, If a developer has more than six games on a third-party store or third-party subscription service, at least three of them must be brought to Epic Games Store. In instances where a developer has less than three games, all of them must be brought to the Epic Games Store. This latest bid at bolstering interest in the Epic Games Store comes just weeks after the company laid off around 830 employees, which was roughly 16% of the total workforce. With Epic's CEO Tim Sweeney admitting at the time, for a while now they've been spending way more money than they were earning. However, in other news, according to reports, Netflix is attempting to expand its gaming division with the acquisition of Grand Theft Auto license in order to produce its own GTA title through Netflix games and bolster what is currently a rather patchy roster of indie titles. This would certainly indicate Netflix's intentions to make it big in what is of course the most profitable market in entertainment, but it should be remembered that Netflix games is available as a mobile platform only meaning the idea of downloading and or streaming AAA titles from the platform by hooking up a compatible controller or adequate TV or monitor are a long way off. If GTA were to arrive on Netflix games, it would most likely be as a separate, standalone, and crucially a mobile title published via Take-Two Interactive's license. This move is of course another attempt at getting more people interested in their gaming space, as so far it's been reported that fewer than 1% of Netflix subscribers play its games on a daily basis but it will take a lot more than a mobile version of GTA to make Netflix a real force in the gaming world. Also in the news, in an interview with Creatures Inc. Managing Director Hiroyuki Junai confirmed that the recently released sequel, Detective Pikachu Returns, was the final game in the storyline that started with 2016's Detective Pikachu for the Nintendo 3DS. But he said that the team isn't ruling out the possibility of a spin-off. Pokemon Company President Sunakazu Ishihara also added to the conversation by saying, I can't make any promises at this point, but if Detective Pikachu Returns is well received and there is a great demand for it, there is room for a spin-off. Detective Pikachu Returns was released earlier this month for Nintendo Switch, and if you are a fan of these Pokemon games, would you be interested in a spin-off title? Let me know in the comments. However, in other news, right before the release of City Skylines 2, developer Colossal Order and publisher Paradox Interactive have issued a warning to fans about the city builder's performance. The statement was posted to the Paradox Interactive Forum as both a news item and an FAQ, and the message is essentially lower your expectations. As it states, City Skylines 2 is a next-gen title, and naturally it demands certain hardware requirements. With that said, while our team has worked tirelessly to deliver the best experience possible, we have not achieved the benchmark we targeted. Despite this, the City Builder won't be delayed on PC, as it was delayed on console into spring of 2024. The FAQ goes on to state, we've taken the long-term vision of the project into account and feel that a release now is the right step. City Skylines 2 presents features of gameplay that we are proud of, and despite that, the game is performance heavy. We believe it will be an experience you'll truly appreciate. And then the news post states, we will continually improve the game over the coming months, but we want to manage expectations on performance for the coming release. Our ambition is for City Skylines 2 to be enjoyed by as many players as possible, and we're committed to ensuring it reaches its full potential. In other words, as is the case with a lot of games these days, the hope is to fix the problems after the launch. However, it is refreshing to have them state the issues before the launch, rather than release a generic apology after the launch, once they've taken everyone's money for the broken mess that they knew they were releasing. As for what players can do if they still decide to buy the game upon release, more details will follow soon, as their statement says, we have determined a few graphic settings that have minimal impact on the player experience, but increase performance significantly. We will provide more details shortly. Also in the news, Blizzard has launched its Season of Blood in-game event for its action RPG sequel, Diablo 4, and as a tie-in, they've also announced a new promotion for the vampire-themed season for US residents. The promotion is called Blood Harvest, 
and Blizzard wants US Diablo 4 players to donate their own blood at any blood clinic. They can go to the Blood Harvest site and submit their proof of donation, such as a confirmation email given to them by their chosen donation site. The proof must be submitted by the end of the day on November the 20th. Blizzard has a goal for players to donate a total of 666 quarts of blood by that due date. If that goal is then reached, Blizzard will unlock in-game items for all Diablo 4 players. But that's not all, once the goal is reached, a new sweepstakes will also open for everyone over the age of 18 in the US. These sweepstakes will award one person with a custom Diablo 4 gaming PC, which the company says will be liquid cooled, in part with real human blood. This PC is powered by an Nvidia GeForce RTX 4090, an Intel Core i9-13900K, 64GB of DDR5 RAM, a 3TB Gen 5 NVMe M.2 SSD storage, and comes in a signature Diablo Red and Black colour palette with custom Season of Blood graphics. The rules for the sweepstake will be unlocked after the 666 quarts of blood donation goal has been reached. However, in other news, late last year, CD Projekt Red announced that it would step back from development from its free-to-play collectible card game, Gwent, with new cards continuing to be added to the pool in 2023, with the card pool to be considered complete after that, and further balance changes left up to the players. Update 11.10 is the final CD Projekt update. This is the last handmade, developer-prepared content update for Gwent. So after this, they won't be preparing changes to cards anymore. Instead, they will be using a system that you can see in the main menu. It's called a Balance Council. The Balance Council allows players of at least Prestige 1, who have either won 25 ranked games in the current season or reached rank 0, to vote on changes once per month. Each player can choose up to three cards or leader abilities to vote on and can choose to vote for their power or provision cost to increase or decrease. The choices are weighted to, with your first choice given in a bracket worth three votes, the second worth two votes, and the third worth a single vote. The cards or abilities will need to rack up at least 50 votes in a month to be changed, with a limit of 15 maximum changes per monthly bracket, and a minimum of three. The aim is to keep the meta fluctuating to prevent it from becoming too predictable, but not so chaotic that the entire deck becomes worthless overnight. Presumably the Gwent team is being shuffled to other projects like the Cyberpunk 2077 sequel, that's early in development following the release of Phantom Liberty, or maybe the other Witcher titles like the next mainline Witcher game, which is set to be the start of a new trilogy. Also in the news we have Frontier Developments, as they are the latest to lay off employees, following what it said was a challenging year. Elite Dangerous Studio Frontier Developments has said that it is implementing a hiring freeze, cutting costs, and laying off an unknown number of employees. They stated, during 2023, Frontier refined its strategy to refocus on its core strengths following a period of disappointing financial performance and more challenging industry conditions. The organisational review announced today will reshape Frontier to deliver on that updated strategic plan more efficiently, return the company to profit and create a sustainable foundation for the future. The review will deliver enhancements to Frontier's leadership and structure drive efficiencies across the company and achieve a reduction in annual operating costs of up to 20%. The cost reductions will be achieved through a recruitment freeze, spending cuts and unfortunately redundancies, subject to consultation. Frontier Developments is a British studio and in the UK employees that are being laid off are legally entitled to a consultation with their employers about why they're being laid off, whether there are any alternatives to being let go and what sort of support will be offered such as retraining once their employment is terminated. Process specifics vary depending on the size of the company in question and the number of people that are being let go. And while it generally doesn't protect employees from being laid off, the overall goal is to ensure clarity, avoid unpleasant surprises, and in theory at least, make the process as soft as possible for employees that are being put out of work. In its 2023 annual report, Frontier said that its previous fiscal year, which ended on May the 31st, was challenging due to a lower than expected sales contribution from F1 Manager 2022. The general sales underperformance across the portfolio during the Christmas holiday period and the poorer than expected performance of the Foundry games. Foundry was Frontier's third party publishing division, which was shut down in June, following disappointing financial performance. Frontier said at the time Foundry has not delivered Frontier's expectations of a positive return on investment within the first year of each title. Frontier Developments is the latest in a long line of game developers that have cut staff in 2023 following Epic Games, Electronic Arts, Activision, CD Projekt, Take-Two, Bioware, Firaxis and numerous others. The organisational review has been announced and is expected to conclude in early 2024, but Frontier did not say how many employees will be put out of work as a result. However, in other news, the Lamplighters League, 
was just released and found solid critical success. However, its publisher, Paradox Interactive, now plans to cut ties with its developer, Harebrained Schemes, following plans to write down development costs after slower than expected sales of the game. In a recently released press release, publisher Paradox Interactive announced that a mutual agreement was made between both parties and the Harebrain Schemes would separate from the publisher and return as an independent studio on January the 1st, 2024. This sudden news came less than a month after the game's release. They were first acquired by Paradox Interactive in 2018. The Lamplighters League Tactics Strategy Game was the developer's first project as an internal studio. Before the Lamplighters League, Harebrain Schemes worked on the recent Shadow Run and Battletech role-playing games, which found great success among the rush of crowdfunding games during the 2010s. In a press release following news of the game's lacklustre success, Paradox Interactive CEO Frederick Wester stated, The Lamplighters League is a fun game with many strengths, even though we see cautiously positive player numbers. In subscription services, the commercial reception has been too weak. Which is frankly a big disappointment. Game projects are by their nature always risky, but at the end of the day, we haven't performed at the level we should. It is painful, but it makes us eager to roll up our sleeves and do better. For now, Harebrain Schemes will still be supporting the game, with post-launch updates and patches in early 2024. The developer will move on from Paradox Interactive and return to being an independent studio. And as for Paradox Interactive, this makes the second major developer shift in recent years, following the reboot of Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines 2, which is now, of course, in the hands of the Chinese room. As for our final story, it's a bit of a weird but wholesome story. Video game speedrunning event, Awesome Games Done Quick, will see its first ever dog compete at its next event in January. In a post on Twitter, speedrunner JSR posted an announcement video which revealed that his Shiba Inu, Peanut Butter, will be appearing at AGDQ 2024, speedrunning the NES game Gyromite. He uploaded a video of his dog speedrunning the game earlier this year using a special paddle controller. The dog has completed the game in 25 minutes and 29 seconds. JSR had to command the dog to press the correct buttons using treats, as seen in the video. Games Done Quick events have now raised more than $40 million for charities around the world since their founding in 2010, including Doctors Without Borders, Prevent Cancer Foundation, Malala Fund, Organization for Autism Research, and CARE. AGDQ 2023 took place in January and by the end of the show had raised a total of $2,642,493 for the Prevent Cancer Foundation. More than 140 speedruns were shown over the course of the week ranging from well-known titles like Dark Souls 2 to the more obscure games such as Axe Battler on the Game Gear. But that's all we have time for this week. If you have any thoughts on anything discussed this week, please leave it in the comment section below as always, and I'll see you next week. Goodbye. <laughs>